don't cooperate with it, I am undermining the word. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, I will encourage you with the strongest possible means that I can. That if you have your Bible here today, Take that and underline, circle, highlight whatever you got to do to the word saved and salvation. Because they are from the same Greek word. And that Greek word is sozo. Sozo. Now, for you that have been with me the two years that I've been here now, you pretty well have an idea where I'm going. Bear with me, though. Don't let familiarity cheat you out of the blessing. Sozo means saved, healed, delivered, set free, made well, made whole, preserved, protected, and caused to prosper. Ready? Saved. Healed, delivered, set free, made well, made whole. I lost my thought there for a minute. Let me back up. Saved, healed, delivered, set free, made well, made whole, preserved, protected, and caused to prosper. Nine different attributes. Confession is made unto... Saved, healed, delivered, set free, made well, made whole. What you say has a lot to do with what you've got. But it begins by hearing. It goes from hearing to believing, from believing to acting like it's so. So you see, I could stand here and I could say, 2018, the year to glean. I can talk to you about having a harvest. And I guarantee you that you're going to hear plenty of talk about financial harvest for 2018. And it's all about your harvesting for them. Because see, I already have the harvest. And so do you. Hello. You already have sozo. I already have sozo. See, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall one day, maybe in the far by and by, when we all get to heaven, be saved. No, it doesn't say that. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When do we get saved? When we called. Not five days later, not five years later, not 50 years later. When we called. When did we call? When we called is when we got sozoed. But see, you and I have been taught to believe that you and I, when we called on Jesus, we got sozoed or we got saved. What did we get saved? We got born again. So that's what we got. I got born again. And all I'm walking in is the new birth, the, the understanding, because I don't know it includes healing. I don't know that it includes deliverance. I don't know that it includes prosperity. So I only walk in what I know. And as long as that's all I know, that's all I'm going to walk in. It doesn't matter if it rhymes or not. See, I remember as a boy growing up in a particular church, we were taught that God would make you sick and that he would use it to teach you a lesson or he would use it to humble you. He would use it to get your attention or draw you closer and all these ridiculous religious ideas that really came from the pit of hell to keep us in bondage. I remember when I found out that God still heals. It blew my mind. He's like, what?
See, as long as I believed that all I got was born again, then all I could enjoy was being born again. But you know what I found out? You hang around the pool long enough, you'll get wet. So I kept hanging out around the Word, and guess what? I started getting educated about the Word. I started learning some things from the Word of God and started finding out what truth really was. And that truth set me free from the lies that I had been indoctrinated with from my childhood. Twenty eighteen is no different. We will only walk in what we know. And if what we know is only born again, then that's what we're going to walk in. We have to be willing to open up our hearts and minds and see the truth of God's Word. The only way we're going to walk in the fullness of sozo is by knowing what it really is and knowing that it's for us now. See, don't take this wrong, and I'm not picking on anybody here, all right? I preface that because I don't want to offend somebody. I mean, you know, you can do that. But I've known people that were really into the prosperity message. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe there is a genuine biblical prosperity message. But I believe that true prosperity is not how many dollars I have in the bank, but the quality of life I live. And that the dollars in the bank are just part of that quality of life. It's not the focus. It's only part of it. And when you really get down to it, it's only a small part of it. I don't mean the numbers have to be small. I mean the significance of it is small. But I know people, they are so into this thing. How I many you know for every truth, there is an extreme? Every truth, there's an extreme. No matter what it is. And so they take this thing to an extreme. And I know people who are into this thing so much that they think that somehow they're just going to automatically get rich. They don't use their money right. They're poor stewards with their credit cards. And somehow they're going to get rich. Yeah, I will, Lord. They don't even tithe or give to the church. They're absolutely stingy. And somehow they're going to get rich. Now, I'm trying to be careful because I don't want people thinking that I'm trying to solicit your money. This is not the ideal here today by any means. But what I'm saying is that people, you cannot work against the laws of prosperity and prosper. You cannot work against the laws of health and healing and be healed and whole. You cannot work against any of the laws of the spiritual realm concerning the blessings and provisions of God and expect them to be in your life and much more abound as they're meant to. Turn with me to John 10 for just a moment. John 10, very familiar verse, and verse 10. John 10, and verse 10. Jesus said here, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The word life there is from the Greek word zoe. And it literally means the life that God is and has. I have come that you might have zoe life or eternal life or life as God is and has. Isn't that wonderful? That's what happened when you and I got saved. When you and I accepted Christ, we received zoe. But notice he said that they might have it more abundantly. Just because you got it doesn't mean you have it in abundance. The provision is in abundance, but it doesn't mean that we are 
walking in the abundance. Just like sozo means all those nine different things, but we may be just walking in the light of the new birth, the saved part as we always refer to. But we're not having the abundance of it. See, God will provide for us in every area of our life. He'll provide the resources, even if it means money. But the focus is not to be on money. It's to be on life. It's not to be on things, but on life. Jesus said in Matthew 26, chapter 6, verse 24, he says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is an old English word for the word money. I mean, you know, God's not against us having things. He's against things having us. And you can always know whether the thing's got you or you got it by whether or not you can give it away. Amen. In that same chapter at the last verse there, Jesus said, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Listen, if the 2018 rhyme that the preacher tells you from the pulpit doesn't line up with seeking God first, get rid of it. If it's seeking your checkbook, if it's seeking a bigger bank account, if it's seeking a bigger car or the, this or that and the other, if it's seeking materialism in any way, turn off the TV or wherever it is and throw the whole thing out because something's wrong. Because if we're not pointing you to Jesus, if we're not telling you to seek after him, something's wrong. Notice he said that if we seek after him, all these things, everybody say things. So God's not against things. He's not against you and I having things. He said all these things shall be added to us. So the problem isn't going after things. The problem is we're not seeking him. Seek his righteousness. Seek him. Seek the things of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. Proverbs 10.22 says, The blessings of the Lord makes one rich. Man, I'd rather have God's riches than the riches of this earth. Because, see, when God, gives, when God makes us rich, it's heavenly, and it includes the things of earth as well. But it's not just earthly itself. Amen. It says, and he adds no sorrow with it. Oh, man, is that a blessing or what? See, it's my joy to tell you that God has great plans for you and I for 2018, 2019, 2020, and beyond. I can tell you without question, God has awesome God plans for you. How little do I know that? How can I be so sure? Because the Bible says so. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, saith the Lord of hosts. Thoughts of plans uh, to, to bless you. It says of peace, to give you hope. The word peace there is from that uh, Hebrew word shalom. Shalom is not just a greeting. Shalom has a very similar meaning to sozo. It means to prosper. means to be safe. Mean, means to be healthy means to be blessed. Did you know that the word blessed means to be happy, fortunate, and to be envied? Uh huh. See, you and I ought to be walking in God's blessing so much that the heathen are envious enough to come into the kingdom. We ought to be like beacons of light of God's blessings. See, God has so much more for us. And it doesn't matter if it's 2017 or 2018. God has a plan of zoe, sozo, shalom for each and every one of us. God has already made the provision of life, health, healing, and longevity. They're already available to us. They're there for us to receive. They're there for us to walk in it. The same is true when it comes to pro the provision of prosperity and abundance. It's already there. We just receive it 
and walk in it. Just like receiving eternal life through the new birth and walking in it. See, we will have to do the same thing with these things as we did when we got saved. We will have to hear what the Word of God really says about these things. Not just because someone has a slant on it that they like most, but to hear what the Word really says. Then to believe God's Word in our heart more than anything or anyone else. And then to act in agreement with God's Word no matter what. I'm going to ask you to turn with me to 3 John 2 and look at this scripture with me as I near my closing for you today. John's third epistle in the second verse says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. So God's not against you prospering. Do you see that? I pray that you may prosper in all things. All. Well, I don't know about you, but last I knew, all meant all. So if it's all, then it must mean all. If it means all, it means all. So it must mean all. Getting it? And some people say, yeah, but. They didn't say, but. That's the problem. You need to get your butt out of the way. That you may prosper in all things and be in health. It's God's will for you to be healthy. It's God's will for you to prosper. Just as your soul prospers. I want you to notice the words, all things. These two words, all things, actually come from a Greek word, one Greek word. And they do mean all things, but they also mean the whole. Every kind. God wants you to prosper in the whole of it. God wants you to prosper in every kind of it. God wants us to prosper in every area of our lives. But the key to our prosperity is not whether God is giving or withholding. The key is not whether the enemy is arrayed against us or not. The key is not what this system of the world is designed and all those things. The key is this. Look at the last part of the verse. As your soul prospers. The key is the prosperity of our soul. As a man thinks, so is he. As long as our minds or in the conditions that they are, we will continue to live in those conditions. Think about it. Until you heard the gospel, worked on your mind, didn't it? Made you change the way you thought about some things. You believed and you responded, right? See, God wants our souls to prosper. Why? Because he knows that the more our soul prospers, the more our life prospers. Our thinking patterns have a great deal of influence on the quality of life we have. And so we need to renew our minds. Not to beat the drum too much before I close. No matter what the rhyme is about 2018, if you're not willing to renew your mind, if you're not willing to walk in faith, if you're not willing to follow God and his plan and purpose for your life, 2018 is not going to be whatever they rhyme it with. It's only going to be You'll love this part. This is what us as people, we love these saints. It's only going to be what we choose it to be. Because see, the responsibility for your life is not me. 